In this lecture, I'd like to continue the, our discussion of the ARIMA framework for time series modeling. Uh, in the last lecture, we spent a lot of time talking about the AR part of ARIMA, the autoregressive models, and how we could use uh, autoregression in models to write, to account for the autocorrelation and errors in models and, and write down process models and data models that accounted for the autocorrelation. Uh, if we think back to the, the autoregressive model, we wrote down that as the y's at, at t was related to y at t minus 1 with some row in front of it that was some correlation coefficient. And we had you know, uh, y being related to some number of uh, rows in the past, uh, y's in the past uh, with some coefficients. Uh, here in the moving average framework, uh, the structure is very similar, but instead of looking at y at time t being predicted uh, by, you know, the you know the residual error at this point plus the y at t minus one and the y at t minus two, we're now saying that to predict y at time t, we need to know the error right now, but also the error at the last time point, the error at the time point before it, and the error in the time point before that, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of saying, uh, you know, it's, you know if, if an autoregressive model was equivalent to a regression on lagged values, this is now equivalent to a regression on lagged uh, residuals. Uh, and that, it's kind of, uh, Seems like a weird concept. I, I, I will admit that I think moving average models are less intuitive than autoregressive models. Uh, but also I will point out that, that it is related to something we started with at the very beginning of this section on classical time series models, which is uh, you know, weighted moving averages, which was uh, when we did smoothing, you know, where we moved a window through a time series and we calculated an average over those time series. Uh, and then we, said that we could do that where there were weights at different lags. And so now, uh, when we did this as a, as a simple smoothing process, those coefficients were just arbitrarily assumed and, and kind of just the, you know, the degree was assumed and we were just doing this as an exploratory analysis. Uh, here in the ARIMA framework, we're doing this, you know, we're gonna end up doing this more as a part of model selection, where we're gonna formally say, uh, we wanna estimate uh, the coefficients associated with that weighting when we're doing a smoothing, and we're going to uh, potentially do model selection to ask how many, uh, you know, how many lags that uh, smoothing window should be. So it's an important special case, you know, a, a moving average model of, uh, of window size Q is a, you know, just a Rima model with uh, zero autoregressive, zero integrative, and a moving average of Q. So again, uh, a lot of these models are just special cases of the full ARIMA framework. Uh, in particular, a really common time series framework that you'll encounter uh, if you uh, read a lot of uh, time series analyses is the, the ARMA framework, which is just dealing with the autoregressive and the moving average component together at the same time. We then write down that y at time t depends on y of t minus one, y of t minus two up to lag p with some correlation coefficients rho, uh, and then also a moving average uh, component. So you know, it also depends on the error now and the error in time one pass and the error in time two pass and the error in time three pass uh, with some uh, weights that are estimated a, you know, a1, a2, a3. So we're combining both the autoregressive and the moving average components, giving us this ARMA model uh, of PQ, which is just a special case of the RIMA model of P0Q. So we've covered the autoregressive component, we've covered the moving average component, which leads the integrated component uh, I uh, with difference D. So an integrated model is just a model that is written in terms of the dth difference of y rather than modeling y. And remember, the first difference of y was just calculating uh, you know, you know, y of now minus y of uh, t minus 1 
and then we're writing that model on that delta y instead of on that y. And so, and remember, the second difference was approximately analogous to a, a second derivative. The third difference was analogous to a third derivative. Um, and also remember when we going back to talking about um, our simple exploratory analysis is that when we took differences, we often got closer to this assumption of stationarity of mean zero and constant variance. And I think I've talked about this before. As mentioned before, differences approximate derivatives. And we biologically may expect to follow some process models, so things like density dependence, uh, ordinary differential equations, partial difference, differential equations, uh, recursive models, any sort of dynamic models often have this integrated uh, framework uh, implicit or explicit in them. And so an integrated model of de degree D uh, would just be an ARIMA model of zero autocorrelation, zero moving average, and difference D. So we can put all of them together and write an ARIMA model, uh, which combines the autoregressive integrated and moving average components all together. Uh, so P lags, D differences, moving average up to uh, Q lags. And it's worth noting uh, this general case is you know, very common in classic frequentist time series analysis, but all of this could be implemented just as well in a Bayesian context. There's nothing that says you can't estimate any of these parameters in a frequentist context. context. Um, it's also worth noting that, as I talked about, our ability to extend the, the AR1 model uh, to dealing with uh, autocorrelated error in you know, uh, linear models, mixed models, generalized linear models generalized linear mixed models, nonlinear models that we can deal with autocorrelation and moving averages and integrations uh, in data models and process models more generally. And again, as we started, that there's you know, a couple important spe special cases, the, you know, the AR model, moving average model, integrative model, the ARM model, and the Gaussian white noise are all important special cases of the ARIMA model. Uh, so before I wrap up, I want to quickly talk uh, now and come back later uh, to questions about how you set uh, P, D, and Q uh, when you do these models. So first, uh, comes back to some of the things we learned in the sections on exploratory analysis. So we can use things like par partial autocorrelation functions uh, to help us estimate how many uh, autocorrelated lags we need, so to help us estimate P. Uh, we can look at our differences, first difference, second difference, third difference, to think about how many differences we want to fit, uh, include in the model, and we can you know, perform some uh, exploratory weighted moving average smoothing using, using the filter function to kind of understand how different degrees of uh, smoothing and different shapes of of smoothing would affect uh, our time series. Uh, but beyond exploratory analysis, uh, everything we've learned in the past about model selection applies to time series models as well. They're just models. They're nothing. Fundamentally, there's nothing special about them other than a bigger covariance matrix. Um, so things like AIC and likelihood ratio tests will work in frequentist models. DIC and WAIC and predictive loss will work in Bayesian models. Uh, in R, we have the convenient function ARIMA, which will fit an ARIMA model of, of order P, D, and Q by just specifying what P, D, and Q you want. Uh, and not only will it return uh, the parameter estimates associated with that model and you know, uh, an object that helps you make predictions, but it also returns the AIC automatically to help you do model selection. Uh, important special case, the R function AR fits autoregressive models specifically. And if you do not tell it specifically what degree you want it to estimate, it will automatically explore a range of Ps and find the one with the lowest AIC. Uh, and we'll do that kind of uh, analysis by default. Uh, yeah. So I think with that, we have a, a kind of 
uh, lay the foundation for thinking about classical time series analysis and, and how we can build that into uh, the, a lot of the modeling approaches we've talked about uh, throughout the semester. Uh, these are complementary to, to what we've been learning. They're not, you know, fundamentally, they're not a different class of models. Uh, they are just an extension of the modeling that we've been doing.